In this lesson, we shall look at analytical geometry, but also we shall go and focus on um, Euclidean geometry as well. In the diagram below, P with coordinates, one and one, and here is the point P clearly there. Q with the coordinates, zero and minus two here, and R are the vertices of a triangle. The angle PRQ is theta. You have the angle P, R, Q, which equals theta here, right? The X intercepts of P, Q, and P, R are M and N respectively. So you have M and N respectively. The equations of the sides, P, R, and Q, R, right? So you have P, R, and uh, obviously Q, R, the examiner has shown those, and we have the equation Y equals minus X plus two. The other equation has been written in the form x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0, respectively. Now, t is a point on the x-axis as shown, and we can see clearly the point t over there. Okay, good news. We're excited because uh, we have a very, very interesting question for us to, to solve at the moment, and let's get started. Now, the first question is we need to calculate or determine the gradient of qp. So we identify Q, right, and P. And now if the obvious examiner uses the language QP, so you're moving from Q to P, in which case you have X1, Y1 here, and X2, Y2. This is like vectors. Okay, right. So we want the gradient of, so in other words, we're looking at 3.1 and to find the gradient. I'm going to send you homework after this. Right. The gradient of QP equals the for delta Y, delta X. Right. So if you have delta Y, delta X, we continue to therefore analyze these which march caution. Right. With absolute caution and we solve um, this question. Okay. Right, we are most certainly ongoing here, and we have this. So, to therefore continue analyzing this, so it actually it is delta y, delta x. Right, so, which is exactly the same as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, in which case, we therefore continue to say, we therefore continue to say um, y2. What is y2? y2 is 1 and y1 is minus 2. Divided by x2 is 1. What is x1? 0. 1 plus 2. So this is like a plus. So negative by negative, it's, 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 it's a positive. So that 1 plus 2 gives us a 3 over 1. And the result is 3. And therefore, we have the gradient. The gradient of QP equals exactly three, like so. And we have therefore found the, the gradient there. Okay, the gradient equals exactly uh, three. Now we want to find the, we want to prove that the angle, the angle PQR equals 90 degrees, right? The angle PQR is 90 degrees. So we want to show that this angle here in 3.2 PQR, this angle here equals 90 degrees. How do we show that that angle equals 90 degrees? Right, so there are a couple of ways to do this, but we already know something. What do we know? We already know that the gradient of the line segment PQ equals what? Equals three. Okay, because uh, uh, PQ or rather QP, so you have the line segment QP, right, it's just a line segment with endpoints clearly defined. And we want to prove that the angle PQR equals 90 degrees. So the angle PQR equals 90 degrees. How do we show that? Right, first things first, we already know. So in other words, we must know two things. We'll need to know the gradient of PQ. Or you can say, use the same language here, is the examiner. So we need to know the gradient of um, QP, right? Gradient of QP, so we write that one. And this gradient of QP is three. 
And with the, therefore, office look at the fact that we have the equation of the line in contact with QP. And uh, the line has the equation this. What is the equation? The equation is x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0. We need to write this equation in the required form, but we need to write it in the form uh, y equals mx plus c. Okay, now making y the subject, we have 3y. It's minus x plus 6. Y equals minus 1 over 3x. You divide 6 by 3, obtaining a 2, like this. Simultaneously, this actually gives us more information, but it asserts to us that we have the gradient of the line here with the equation given. The gradient of the line QR and the gradient of the line QR is what? Is minus one third. Okay, thus, or hence, the gradient of QP times the gradient of QR equals the gradient of QP is three multiplied by the gradient of QR is what? Is minus one third, like so. Multiplying three with minus one third gives us an, a minus one. Okay, what is the meaning of this? We have found and we have established the fact that the gradient of QP times the gradient of QR is minus one. And this means therefore that at this point, we can then say the gradient of QP times the gradient of QR equals minus one. Okay, right. We know the equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. And we know that if the equation of a line is written in this form, it can be written in the required form y equals mx plus c. And this is called the slope intercept form of the equation of a line, right? It is called the slope intercept, right, slope, intercept form of the equation of a line. Okay, now, if then the gradient here, the product of the gradient is minus one, so you have, therefore, the implication, and what is the implication? If you multiply two gradients and you obtain minus one, it means, therefore, at this point, QP is indeed perpendicular to QR. Why? Because the product of the gradients is minus one. It therefore means that the, the two lines are perpendicular. In this case, QP is perpendicular to, to, to QR. Okay, once again, I'm going to send you homework at the end of this. Please try the homework. I'm going to make it uh, a bit more mandatory for you to make some submissions to me of the homework so that I can mark the homeworks so that um, you can see your progress. Because uh, if I just give the homeworks, some of you might just be sleeping on the homeworks. And you see, if you sleep on the homeworks, it's not really going to be useful very much. Okay, but we are excited to continue to the next question. Okay, just to sum up our answer here and to summarize, we have established the fact that now um, QP is perpendicular to QR. Why? Because the product of the gradient is minus one. You know, so yeah. Next question. Right, in the next point, what to determine the coordinates of R? The coordinates of R. What determine the coordinates of R? Right, to determine the coordinates of R, what do we do? <laughs> Straightforward. We can see there are two lines. The line whose equation is y equals minus x plus two. Another equation whose line is x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0. These two lines intersect at the point R. And we want to determine the coordinates of R. And this is like two lines intersect at a point. We know the equations, and we can solve them simultaneously. We proceed as follows. We have y equals minus x plus 2 here. Next equation, this one here, is the equation x plus 3y plus 6 
equal to zero. Okay, these are the two equations. We've just written them down. We're going to go back to grade 10 and use what you call the substitution method. We can also use elimination. So we proceed to say substitute. Right, so we say substitute. Substitute equation. Equation one into two. If we substitute equation one into equation two, we have x plus three. What is y? It's minus x plus two. So we're actually substituting equation one into two. Plus six equals zero. Minus three x. Six plus six equals zero. What is x minus two x? Minus three x. It's already minus two x. Now six plus six gives us 12. If you move it across, it becomes exactly a negative 12. And so, what we then have is minus 2x equals minus 12. Divide by minus 2, minus 2, so that x equals 6. x equals 6. And so that becomes the actual re uh, value of x at the point r and uh, simultaneously our y equals what is our y okay use one of the equations minus x together with two add it together what is x right so you have that x is minus six plus two what is minus six plus two to minus four like so okay let's just remove this this equal sign here equation one is y equals minus x plus 2, and we have rewritten the equation. We substituted in the place of x, we have minus 6 plus 2 minus 4. What are the coordinates of r? What are they? Well, the coordinates of r, therefore, are as follows, are actually exactly 6, together with a minus 4, like so. Now, the couple of things that remain very, very important for us to take into account. But what do we do next? We solve the next question. Okay, to summarize, we have been able to, we have been able to uh, proceed to determine the coordinates of R. How did we do that? We realized that there's a line here whose equation we know. Another line exists whose equation we know. They meet at a point. And when they do, we have a point of intersection. A point of intersection is the point R. And the coordinates have been found. Exactly 6 and minus 4. Next question. Right. In the next uh, case, we continue to look at the same diagram, but want to calculate the length of PR. Okay, we already know the coordinates of R. The coordinates of R are exactly six together with negative four, the four coordinates like this, PR. P is there. Okay, P is up there. And we know that P is the coordinates one and one. So you're going to write, write it down. We know that P has the coordinates one and one. And we want to find the length of PR from P to R. What is the length? Right. So that in the end, we have X1, Y1. X2, Y2. So what is the length of PR? So we can see, therefore, that the length of PR is as follows. What is the formula for the length? The length is also called the distance formula. So the length of a line segment is obtained by using the distance formula. X2 minus X1 squared. Y2 minus Y1 in parentheses squared. Like so. We proceed. Okay, this one is called the distance. It is called the distance. Distance formula. 
we use this one to find the distance between two points. We perform the valuation of the distance, PR equals the giant, the big square root, x2, 6, x1, 1, y2, minus 4, y1, it's a 1, oh, okay, so it's a minus 1, so you put a minus y1, so it's minus 1 here, right, so yeah, let's continue. which means PR equals, what is six minus one? It's a five squared. Minus four minus one. It's a minus five squared. 25 plus 25. What is 25 plus 25? It is exactly the square root of 50. It is exactly the square root of 50. So obviously we have that PR equals the square root of 50. But the square root of 50 is 25 times two. What is 25 times two? Square root of 25, square root of two. 50 is 25 times two, square root of 25, square root of two. What is the square root of 25? It's five to the square root of two units. This gives us that in simplified such form, so this is the length uh, of PR, which is um, at five to the square root of two units. So here, this one is called a simplified Z. So obviously, this is said to, to be in simplified. Simplified Z form. Simplified, sad form. This is what we have. Where's the question about, because the examiner said, leave your answer in sad form. What is a sad? Well, a sad here is the square root of two. The square root of two is a sad. Right, because why? Well, because uh, the square root of two is irrational. If the square root of a number is irrational, therefore it is called a sad. Right, let's look at 3.5. Determine the equation of a circle passing through P, Q, and R in the form that. Let's look at 3.5 together. In 3.5, we want to determine the equation of a circle passing through P, Q, and R in that form. What do we do here? What do we do here? Right, determine the equation of a circle. This circle passes through the point P. Right, the point P is up there with the coordinates one and one. And um, we want to find the equation of a circle that passes through the points P, Q, and R in that form. Okay. In R, we know very well, find the coordinates six together with minus four. Okay. So now, if this is the case, there are a couple of things we know because this we already know the, this is what? We already know that's an angle of 90 degrees there. So to find the equation of a line, we just need to, so if the circle exists, as it surely does, and the circle passes through those points, like so. Right, just like as shown um, um, in the diagram. Now, I want us to analyze this, but with much caution. So at this point, we continue to determine the equation of a circle passing through P and R in that form. Okay, this circle here clearly has an angle of 90 degrees inside it. That is subturned by this line segment from boundary to boundary. 
And then now we are able to see that this is a, it's an angle in semicircle in from Euclidean geometry. We know therefore that this line segment is what? And uh, the a chord. A chord is a well, chord means you have this. So there's a chord like this. There's a special type of chord that passes through the center. This is a chord. This one is a chord. Okay, so let me let me write clearly here to avoid ambiguity. Because <laughs> somebody will be like, okay, what do you mean by chord? Right, so this one is a chord. This from the boundary, the boundary is called a chord. Now, what do we call this chord? Because chord, it means that it's just a line segment from the circumference to circumference of the same circle. Okay, now, what do we call this type of a chord that passes through the center? What do we call it? What do we call that chord? What is the name of that chord? Anyone? Diameter. It's called a diameter. Well done. Thank you so much. It's called a diameter. I was just testing you to see if you can relate to that. So, yeah, to determine the equation of a circle passing through the points P, Q, and R, we are able to then say there is a circle that passes through P, Q, and R. And therefore, this one is a diameter because it obtains an angle of 90 degrees. We know that from um, Euclidean geometry, it is an angle. This one is an angle in semicircle, subtended by a diameter. Okay, if it is the, an angle subtended by a diameter, what can we say about this? We can say, we can be able to find the center of this circle because by finding the midpoint of this uh, circle, and we can call the center O of the circle. Okay, there's already point O there. We can give it a different name. Right, you can give it a different name, but it is necessarily uh, the center of this circle. And uh, this center, we can actually be in a position to play around with it. Let's play around with this circle, the, with this center. Because we want to find the equation of this circle. Right, so to find the equation of a circle, we need a center and the length of the radius. So now, because if we want to find the equation of a circle, what is the formula? It's this one. Because the equation of a circle passing through PQ and R in this form. So you have X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared equals R squared. And therefore, what is the center? What are the coordinates of this? Because now this is the, the the answer must look like this. The equation of the circle must be in this form. But when you just need the center, what is the center? So the center now, we note that PR, PR is the diameter. PR is the diameter. PR is a diameter card. Chord sub tens. 90 degrees. Why is PR a diameter? It is the uh, PR is a diameter because it is a chord that subtains 90 degrees. So we can be able to find the center of circle. Can be able to find center of circle. Which is x1 plus x2 out of 2. y1 plus y2 out of 2. All right, so this one is x1, y1, x2, y2. x1, 1 x2 6 out of 2 y1 is 1 y2 is minus 4 out of 2 1 plus 6 1 plus 6 is actually 7 out of 2 and 1 minus 4 is a minus 3 minus 3 out of 2 
and uh, we need to find the so we therefore know that the coordinates of the center are seven over two together with minus three over two so this becomes a uh, this is the center of the circle if this is the center of the circle we just need to find out the distance between the, the we need to find the radius okay so the distance between the center and the point r for example or the distance between the point p and the center so um, or alternatively, you can just find this, um, which is the easiest one. You can just find PR. Did you find PR? Yes. Wow. Awesome stuff. We found PR. The examiner just uh, wanted to give to us. So we found PR and PR was found in the previous question. We found PR in simplified set form to be actually five the square root of two units. PR was found to be five to the square root of two units. So we continue to state that one. PR is five to the square root of two units. And if this is the case, then what is the radius? So we're able to state that the radius. Okay, so obviously, I mean, the PR is a diameter. It is a diameter. Okay, the diameter, radius. The radius, therefore, means that you take the diameter and divide by what? And divide by two, take half of the diameter, like so. So, we have the following. Okay, yeah, so we have this one. which is, okay, so the formula is x minus a squared plus open bracket y minus b squared. So what is our a? a is seven over two there. So y'all just use the same color, doesn't matter. So it's x minus seven out of two. You square this plus y, you put a minus. So you put a minus here, and you know, this is exactly minus three over two. You square this and it becomes the R squared, the square of the radius, and the square of the radius, the radius is five, the square root of two. So we can write the run down. Five, the square root of two. Okay, you square everything, but like everything. Okay. So if this is squared, and then you add here. Okay, so it's like seven out of two. Okay, you have seven out of two like this. And then if you square this here, it becomes, if you square five, it's 25. You square the square root of two, becomes a two. And you square, you square two, it becomes exactly a four. And if you simplify these, uh, two goes m n times into four, it goes two times, and this gives us exactly 25 out of two. Right. Right, 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 right. 25 out of two. Excellent stuff. 25 out of two. And, and therefore, this is the equation of the circle that the examiner wants. We can write it down, but more compactly and say, okay, Mr. Examiner, uh, the answer to the equation you want is uh, this one here. It is exactly X minus seven out of two squared plus, and then you have the other, the other Y. Okay, you are seven out of two, then you have Y plus three out of two. And the result is 
25 out of 2. The result is 25 out of 2. And this here in green is the equation of the circle in the required form x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals the radius squared. Okay, so you need to learn how to deal with circles, but also what is the equation of a circle? The equation of a circle is x minus a all squared plus open bracket y minus b all squared plus r, uh, or which equals r squared. Okay, this is the equation of a circle. Is this the only equation of a circle? Well, no, it's not. There are uh, different forms of the equation of a circle. What other forms exist? Let us look at the following. You can have as well like x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared is r squared. So this becomes the equation of a circle that has center, center at the origin. It has its center at the origin. And therefore, this one here is the equation of a circle with its center at the origin. So that's something that you need to take note of. Okay, so this one, if the A and the B are both zero, zero and zero, and then we have X squared plus Y squared is R squared, this is becomes the equation of a circle uh, whose center is at the origin of the plane. Okay, we continue to celebrate more mathematics, but to solve more math by doing the next question as follows. Right, we are able to do 3.6, determine the equation of a tangent to the circle passing through P, Q, and R at point P in that form. So obviously, I mean, we have that the point P has the coordinates one and one. And one determine the equation of a tangent to the circle passing through P, Q and R. Remember that we found the equation of a circle passing through the points P, Q and R in, in that form, and we're done with that one. But the, the examiner is saying, hey, buddy, determine the equation of a tangent this time around to the circle passing through P, Q and R at P in that form. Okay, there's a tangent at P. Right, P is the point upstairs here, and therefore now there's going to be a tangent at P, which is going to be uh, a tangent to the circle. Zoop, straight line like that, and the circle passes through the point P, and you have this kind of, this kind of a diagram. Okay, this is a circle, but it's not, it's not to scale. I'm ju just trying to show the point P is just up there. Okay, now if the tangent is there, guys, how do we therefore proceed to find uh, the equation of a tangent? Very, very easy. But first, to find the equation of a tangent, a tangent is a line in the form y equals mx plus c. This equation of a line, I said, is called the slope. Intercept. Intercept form. It is called the slope intercept form. Okay, I'm going to give you the homework uh, at the end of our discussion, and you're going to practice more. And make sure that you're good. But we want to find the equation of a tangent. So now to find the equation of a tangent, there's something that uh, you need to know. Um, first things first, what have we been able to get here? And uh, what do we know? We know a couple of gradients. We know a couple of gradients. These gradients that we know, are they enough? Are they not enough? We check. We check. We need a gradient of a radius. Seven over two minus three over two. Seven over two minus three over two. Okay, so we want to find the gradient um, of a radius. Now, a radius obviously it's it's it's, it's a line segment through the center of a circle from the center of the circumference, like half the diameter. That's a radius. So now we want to determine the equation of attention to the circle passing through those points. What do we do? We are able to take note of the following. And uh, the question was then saying, what is the gradient of the radius? Woo! This is awesome. This, this is the, the gradient of our radius. 
the gradient of the radius. So in other words, you know that the gradient of the radius is minus one. Okay, yeah, we can see that this is the radius. Uh, this is the equation of the radius. So the gradient is minus one. Okay, if the gradient then is minus one, what do we then do? We are then able to um, know that the gradient of the radius or the gradient of a radius plus the gradient of a tangent to a circle, if you multiply them, it's always the result is always minus one. Why is that the case? Well, it is always the case because we know very well that uh, um, your, your tangent, your tangent is always perpendicular to your radius. It's always perpendicular to your radius at the point of contact, at the point of contact. So now we know already the brand of the radius. Why? Because this is the equation. And this in this equation, we're able to see, oh, okay, it is coming from the slope intercept form of the equation of a line. Y equals mx plus c. Now look at this. The gradient is minus one there. Okay. Now, what do we do? What do we do? We continue then say, we want to find the gradient of the tangent. So we substitute here. That of the radius, the gradient of the radius, you put a minus one. equals minus one. The gradient of the tangent, divide by minus one, you multiply both sides by minus one, getting a one, like this. Getting a one like that. So now we know the gradient, but now this tangent, this tangent passes through the point because they said the equation of a tangent um, to the circle passing through P, Q, and R, the circle passes through P, Q and R at point P. The tangent is at the point P. It's a line through the point P, and therefore this tangent is through. Right, so this tangent is through. Right, so this tangent is through. It is through one and one. Right, so this tangent is through P with coordinates one and one. Right, so we're going to use Y minus, which is the slope point form. Right, which Y minus Y1, which is M into X minus X1. Okay, we continue. X1, Y1. Y1, the M is one, X minus X1. All right. So you have X minus one. And then now you have X, you have exactly the equation y equals x because even here when you get here now we, we have this so you can have minus one and then this one you bring it across so it becomes plus one in which case therefore this implies that y is x y equals x okay we found the full the equation of the line that the examiner wants in particular the equation of the tangent what is the equation of the tangent the equation of the tangent is clearly y equals x and we have solved that question but we solved that question um, with a great deal of detail so yeah take a look at that and make sure you understand what is happening and uh, make sure that all is well so look at these think about it and make the most of your time make the most of your time where's the question Where's the contribution to make? Maybe you're seeing a mistake somewhere. Maybe you're seeing something is missing. We need to add something or we need to remove something. Okay, so you can 
Um, oh, you're always welcome to let us know. Okay, another question that Zemina asks is, calculate the size of the angle theta. Calculate the size of the angle theta. Um, right, so um, we continue. Um, so, um, so we continue. We continue. We continue. So, in the end, then, what we then have is as follows. Right. Okay. Right. So, if you want to calculate, therefore, the size of the angle theta, this one. The size of the angle theta, that one. So, now, to find the size of the angle theta, we proceed as follows. We proceed as follows. Right. The couple of things that are very important, we look at that next. We want to find the size of this angle. So now, what is the size of that angle? You see, there are a couple of ways to obviously uh, find the size of that angle there. There are a couple of ways to find the size of that angle, and uh, we shall continue to do so. We shall continue to do so. Um, okay, so we continue. Um, right, we continue. We continue. So determine the equation of a tangent to, to the circle. Right, rather to find the size of the angle theta, this one here. We're going to use the formula. What is the formula of finding the size of an angle in analytical geometry? It is the gradient formula. We know that the gradient is the tangent of theta. Right. Um, so we continue. Right. We continue. We continue. So if this formula, we use this formula to find the size of the angle theta. So we shall find first, we shall note that the, okay, this up here is the point P with coordinates one and one. Um, right, so we continue. Right, so we can find a couple of angles, like for example, you can find P and T, you can find this angle of inclination. Let's uh, write that one clearly. Right, so P is those coordinates, and therefore that would be. Um, So we continue. So now the uh, this is the point P up there. So now you can find the angle P and T. So we can find the gradients, or rather the um, the tangent. Okay, let us find the tangent. So let's find the tangent of the angle. P and T, this one, P and T. Okay, the formula we use to find angles in analytical geometry is the tangent formula. So we find P and T. Right, by P and T, you want to find this angle. What is this? P and T is uh, the gradient of PR. Okay, so. The tangent of P and T would, because this is one line, so it will be the same as the gradient of the line P to R. And the gradient is minus one. So what is the angle of inclination of this line? Right, this allows us to find what we call the angle. Angle of inclination. 
What is the angle of inclination of a line? Right, the angle of inclination of a line is the angle made by the line with the positive, positive x-axis. So we always measure our angles here, like zero degrees and so on. Okay, we remember that from trigonometry. Okay, so we continue with the business of, of the day. If P and T is uh, equal to minus one, then we can find, uh, we find first uh, the reference angle, which is octane of minus one, okay? But the, the reference angle is always found with, with a plus. So even if the, the right-hand side is negative, but we want to find the smallest possible angle in the first quadrant, so we use the plus there. And therefore, octane, octane one, Right, so octane one is 45 degrees. Okay, this is not this angle here, but it is a reference angle that's associated with this number one. Now, if this, this is a reference angle, what do we do? We then take this reference angle and we We find something. We find the actual angle P and T. Okay, if F, in which quadrant is the tangent negative? It is negative in the second quadrant. So this angle is an angle we can see. It's, it's bigger than 90 degrees, so it's just 180 degrees minus 45, which is 135 degrees. Okay, meaning this angle here is 135 degrees. Okay. So what do we do? So we continue. We continue. We continue. So right then in the end, in the end, we have the following. If this angle is 135 degrees, okay. These also, I mean, we can do a lot of things there. We can find a lot of the angles, but let us find angles that are very useful. Right, we found that angle. And so what do we do with that angle? We continue to analyze uh, these very carefully. You can find another, uh, the tangent also. Let's find this one. We can find the tangent of PMT. The tangent of um, PMT, right? So the, the tangent of the angle PMT is uh, the gradient of the line PQ. P is up here, Q is this one. So it's the gradient of the line PQ. And the gradient of the line PQ found it to be three. Remember, gradient of PQ found it to be three or QP, you called it QP, but yeah. We found it to be three and uh, we continue then and uh, we solve more problems. We solve more problems, right? We solve more certainly more problems there. Right, so in solving more problems, we obtain the following. We obtain the following. We obtain the following. So we solve. Um, we have the following, right, we have the following, right, so at this point, what we then do, we then we then continue to analyze this, but I want to find the gradient that's associated with that. Okay, can we therefore, um, let me speak to this student here. Right, yes, how are you? Very well, yes, how, you're doing well. Yeah. 
Why didn't you join the class? Because there's a class now on Zoom app, and I sent the link on the on the on the WhatsApp group. Why did you not join the class? Okay, I'm about to join. Yes, because now the class is ongoing until six, and we started at four already. And I expected you to join the class. So. Yeah. So now refer to the group WhatsApp group, and uh, tap on the link because there's a link there. Okay. And then now you need to tap on that link on the WhatsApp group and uh, you will be able to join the class. Okay. Because I expected you to join the class because uh, we spoke about this earlier on. Yeah. So please join the class because the class is ongoing until six. So we still have about one hour to go. Okay. All right. Thanks. Sure. All right. Thanks. Okay, yeah, so we continue now. Um, there's this student that is the... Uh, it's just been... Um, he me, he, this student was missing the class. Okay, uh, because I don't know why. Okay, so we have that. Then now we found that the tangent of PMT, of the angle PMT, so the tangent of the angle P is this one up here. MT. So this angle here. The tangent of this angle here is equal to the gradient of PQ, and it is 3. PMT is 71 degrees. Okay. Uh, PMT. Now to find the angle PMT because it's positive, we can just, if it's positive, there's no need to find the reference angle. So you find the arc 10 3 using a calculator, you have 71,57 degrees. 71,57 degrees. So we continue. We continue. So we continue. Continuing, we have the following. Right, and this gives us exactly this angle of 71,57 degrees, meaning this guy, this angle. PMT. is equal to 71,57 degrees. Okay. So now we have uh, exactly that. The question then becomes, what is the angle theta? So this one, let me do it in red. This one we already know is exactly 90 degrees. And then, if this is exactly 90 degrees, this angle of P now we're going to get, because this one is equal to this plus this, exterior angle of a triangle from grade 10. Exterior angle of a triangle, this angle is equal to this plus that. In other words, now we're able to see that the angle P, the angle P, is equal to 135 degrees minus 71,57 degrees, which is 63. 63,43. Okay. Like this. So now, if this angle P is 63,43 degrees, so we have a triangle that is doing the some aerobics. Okay, look at this. There is one here, 90 degrees. Okay. <laughs> 63. 
comma four three degrees is up. And then this one here is theta. Is theta. So we just need to find this one. What is the angle theta? Now we already know this one P, you already know this one is 90 degrees. You just need to find the third one. So this one is uh, back to the sum of angles in a triangle. So we're able to see that the angle theta. Okay, so here you must state the reason. You must state the reason why we just said 135 minus 71. Um, here, 135 minus 71, 0.57. The reason for this is uh, exterior. Exterior angle of triangle. Exterior angle of triangle. Exterior angle of triangle. Exterior angle of triangle. So we continue. We continue. So yeah, I want to find the size of the angle theta. So yeah, the, the angle theta is actually um, exactly this one. So we already know this angle. You already know this angle. So what do you do now if you know two angles? Yay! So the angle theta is this one. So to find a third angle, you just say 180 degrees because you're dealing with a triangle. You're dealing with the sum of the, all the angles. So it's 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 63,43 degrees. Subtract all of them. 26, 26. Can you even write? You can write it here above. It's okay. You can write it here. You can write it a little bit above here. So yeah, we're able to say the angle theta. The angle theta that is wanted is 180 degrees, 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 63,43 degrees. So then the um the result is therefore 26,57 degrees. 26,57 degrees. And therefore, as a result, we are interested in giving the reason here. And this is the sum of angles in a triangle. This is exactly the sum of angles in triangle. This is the sum of angles in triangle. Sum of angles in triangle. So what is the angle theta? The angle theta is actually 26,57 degrees. So obviously, I mean, this is what the examiner asked us to do here, and we're able to state that up front, that the angle theta, Miss examiner, is actually... 26,57 degrees. Right, where's the question? Please, if you have a question, let us know. If you have no question, you have to uh, still let us know because we're good and we're cruising and we're getting the most, we're getting the most here of our staff. And yeah, let us look at the next question. Next question. Right, so in the next case, we're going to look at this circle. And we want to deal with this circle, but also want to be in a position to, to solve this question in detail. In the diagram below, the equation of the circle with center O at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals 20. So this is the equation of the circle. The tangent PRS to the circle at R, this a tangent PRS to the circle at R has equation y equals one half x plus k. So we have that PRS cuts the y-axis at t, okay, and the x-axis at s. 
Yeah, the x axis said s. Determine giving reasons the equation of OR in the form y equals mx plus c. Y equals mx plus c. So we have the following. We have the following. Right, so. Now let's look at 4.1. Let's look at 4.1. Give the uh, determine giving reasons the equation of OR in this form. OR. What is the equation of OR? Equation of OR. Right. So what does I mean? You have O and R. O is the origin. And uh, now to find the equation of OR, the couple of things that remain very, very important. <laughs> it's the examiner. Right, very smart question. But now you need to note that first we have the, um, the tangent, this tangent. This tangent touches the second thing. So you have the gradient of the tangent. What is the gradient of the tangent? Right, so the gradient of the tangent, just write tangent here. So the gradient of the tangent is one half. What is this tangent doing? What is it doing? It is touching the circle at most at one point. And why are we saying the gradient is this? Because the equation is this. Because the equation is y equals one half x plus k. y equals mx plus c. Okay. Okay, so we continue. We continue. Right, so now to continue, we do the following. We need to know, therefore, that the gradient of a tangent multiplied by the gradient of um, a radius at the point of contact, this is minus one. Why is it minus one? Because we know that a tangent is always perpendicular to a radius at the point of contact. This tangent is one half so that we have the gradient of the radius. And it's minus one. Cross multiply the gradient of the radius is minus two. This is the radius. The tangent is gradient one half and therefore the gradient of the radius is minus two. So that then in the end, We want to determine giving reasons the equation of OR. But now the equation of OR, OR passes through. Passes through O, the origin. Y minus Y1. M into X minus X1. Okay, the origin. So Y minus zero minus two into x minus zero, which means y is minus two x. So the equation, determine the equation of OR in that form. So the equation of OR in that form is actually that one given over there. It is that one given over there. It is actually um, is given just minus 2x. Check that. So obviously, I mean, we're effectively then saying the equation in the form here um, is minus 2x. Okay. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we continue. We continue. Right, so now you want to find the coordinates of R. Open to. The coordinates of R. Right, you can find the coordinates of R. Can I give you like one minute? Find the coordinates of R quickly. Find the coordinates of R quickly if you are, we're doing 4.2. If you already know that the answer here is minus 2x, find the coordinates of R quickly. What are the coordinates of R? What are the coordinates of R? Who can find the coordinates of R? Who can find the coordinates of R? Who can find the coordinates of R? Right, so R is uh, a point of intersection of the this um OR has this equation, so you have y equals minus 2x, but the R, this one is a circle, and it has an equation that intersects OR at the point of contact here where this circle meets the radius. So in which case, therefore, we're able to say the is a point of intersection. So you have two equations. You need to just solve these two equations simultaneously. It's a point of intersection, so you have x squared plus y squared. Is 20. But you also have y equals minus 2x. Okay, you have that. So what you do is you put 2 into 1. So you put 2 into 1. And if you put 2 into 1, wherever there's y, you can put minus 2x. So you have x squared plus. The y is minus 2x. The y is minus 2x, which equals 20. x squared plus. If you square minus 2, you get 4x squared equals 20. You have 5x squared equals 20. OK. Because x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. You divide both left and right by 5, getting x squared equals, okay, let's write a little bit more steps dealing with dealing with uh, school here. So let's just show some trivial step, steps. So you have 5x squared divided by 5 equals 20 divided by 5. In which case, therefore, you have x squared equals 4. If x squared equals 4, you take the square root of x squared, it must equal plus or minus the square root of 4. x equals plus or minus 2. Okay. What is R? X at this point is on the positive side. So X is plus or minus two, but at this point you have that. Um, therefore, X equals two because uh, X is positive here. So this R is on the positive side of the X, but you get a Y as well. What is Y? So obviously we use one of the equations, so y equals minus 2x. x is 2. Minus 2 times that is minus 4, which is minus 4. OK, yeah. So the coordinates of r are 2 minus 4. Um. So. We continue to solve more problems. We continue to solve even more problems. So the coordinates of R are those. The coordinates of R are those. The coordinates of R are those ones. And we continue to solve more questions. Continue to solve more and more problems. We have obviously at this point, the point R with the coordinates 2 and minus 4. And uh, if this is the case, 
we have the following then. We have the following. Right, so welcome um, the student who just joined now. And uh, normally I don't show a lot of pictures on the screen. Um, I just hide the pictures because the interest is in just learning than anything else for us. So we can sometimes show the pictures and see this one, see that one. We're going to have those sessions like that. Right, we're going to have those sessions like that. So, yeah, but we then continue. So the coordinates of R, therefore, the examiner wants them, what are they? For this question, the coordinates of R are X is exactly 2 and Y is minus 4. X is 2 and Y is minus 4, and those are the coordinates. Those are the coordinates. Those are the coordinates. So we continue. Those, okay. Yes. Yes, welcome. Um, right. Yeah. Yes, we're doing analytical geometry. Right, we're doing analytical geometry. And at this point, we attempted to find the coordinates of R. And R is uh, a point here, a point of tangency. We can see on the diagram. Right, that there is a tangent. The examiner said the tangent PRS, PRS to the circle at R has the equation y equals one half x plus k, and we can see that. Okay, we have solved that question, and we move on to the next one. Right, the next question is question 4.3. In 4.3, we want to determine the area of triangle OTS. Right, here is O, here is T, and here is S. O, T, S. Want to find the size of this triangle here. Want to find the size of this triangle here. What is the size of this triangle? Okay, that's a very wonderful triangle that looks like a boot, like a soccer boot. Anyhow, okay. We can find the um, the area of that triangle, but that triangle is a very, very awesome one. There are a couple of things we need to know, obviously, but what do we need to know? We need to be in a position to know um, the length of the sides, right? To find the area of this triangle, we need to find the length of the sides. And so now, what do we know? We need to know a couple of things, but let's first do this. Right, let us first take note of the fact that we're going to say that uh, through, right, exactly through, right, Right, through the point R, R has the coordinates. We have seen the coordinates of R. We found them to be 2 and minus 4. 2 and minus 4. Those are the coordinates of R. 2 and minus 4. So the coordinates of R are exactly 2 together with minus 4. Through the point R, we have the equation, which is 1 half x plus k which means which means that minus 4 2 plus k minus 4 1 plus k minus 5 okay so we have k equals minus 5 and then now this equation of the line is uh, actually then we found a K because this equation of the line was given as Y equals one half X plus K. But we've already got the numerical value of K and we got K to be exactly that one. So, um, right, we're able to then say that uh, the equation of the line was given as one half X plus K by the examiner but it is exactly one half x minus five. 
if this is the case, we want right now with the moment to to continue to actually proceed to find the area. Right to find the area now, we must find the intercept with the axis so that we can easily be able to find the length of the sides. So we proceed as follows to find the um the length of the sides. So now a couple of things remain very, very important here. So for instance, we want to know um the x intercept. So now we find so obviously with this, and we found k and this is that. Okay. X minus five. Look. Okay. So ah, now we can just say we're interested in the x intercept of this line here. So to find the x-intercept, how do we find the x-intercept? To find the x-intercept, we let y be equal to zero. <laughs> y equals one half x. Okay, let's just continue. One half x. Y equals one half x minus five. But obviously, I mean, we're saying effectively y is zero here. So if y is zero, we're able to see, therefore, that y is zero, so that zero is one half x minus five. This implies that you bring the minus five to the other side, so that we have five is equal to one half x. You cross multiply, two times five gives us 10 equals x. I mean, that is telling us that we know the coordinates of S. Um, X is 10 and Y is zero at this point, at this point. And so now we therefore continue to solve more problems at this point. Um, right, let me just speak to this student here. Yes, hello, precious. I'm in class at the moment um, until six. Okay, thanks then. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Right, so you continue right now to analyze these questions, but to look at what we can do better. What we can do better. Okay, we know that this is 10 for X. It is exactly 10. So, I mean, it is telling us in a nutshell that our OS, right, it's telling us that OS, this is O and that is S here, OS is 10 units. It is telling us that OS is 10 units. So then we want to then find the area of triangle OTS. So area of triangle OTS is actually the same as half base by height. The area of a triangle is half base by height, which is half the base. What is the base? The base, we can take the base to be this one here, which is exactly 10, multiplied by the height. What is the height? Okay, you take the base as this one, the height is gonna be up to OT, and uh, now what are the coordinates of T? What are the coordinates of T? Okay, so obviously, I mean, we know very well, this is the straight line here. And the Y-intercept, Y-intercept, because it's Y equals, y, is y equals half, um, one half X minus five. So the Y-intercept is minus five, right? So that now OT is five units. OT is five units. Okay. We have half of 10. What is the half of 10? It is five by five. What is five times five? 25. So the area of the OTS, triangle OTS is 25 square units.
25 square units. 25 square units. 25 square units. Okay. 25 square units. Where's the question? Who doesn't understand what is happening? Who is lost somewhere? Who is saying, hey, why did you do this? Where is that? Because what was the question? The examiner said, determine the area of the triangle OTS, given that the, the, the point R has the coordinates 2 and minus 4. We had already got that R has the coordinates 2 and minus 4 before. We did that in the previous question. Because in 4.2, we found the coordinates of R. So yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. So we continue right now to solve more problems. Continue to solve the next question, 4.4. Uh, right in 4.4, want to calculate the length of VT. The length of VT calculate the length of VT. Okay. Calculate the length of VT. So there's a V here, this T here, and the examiner is saying find the length, the distance from here to there. What is that distance? What is that distance? Let us find the length of VT. What is the length of VT? A couple of things we know. I mean, we already know the coordinate of T because we know the equation of this line from the previous question. And the, the equation of this line from the previous question is Y equals uh, 1 half X minus 5. Yeah. So yeah, we continue. We continue. <laughs> yes. Okay, the length of VT. What do we do to find the length of VT? We find it as we find it as follows. To find the length of VT, we just need the coordinate of T because you already know, well, the coordinate of T already know because this T is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is minus five. So if this is minus five here, then it means the coordinate of T are x is zero and y is minus five. That we can see. Um, this will give us actually the coordinates of the point T. We therefore just need the coordinate of the point uh, V. But how do you find the coordinates of the point V? It is something that is very, very straightforward because uh, we already know something. What do we know? We already know the coordinates at this point um, of uh, the point, uh, for instance, uh, um, the point R, the point R. What are the coordinates of the point R? Right, we already know the coordinates of the point R. R has the coordinates of uh, this one, uh, two together with minus four. And therefore, we can find the coordinates. So in other words, now, if you give a line like this, and this one is the origin, and this is a, a diameter because it passes through the center of the circle, and also the point R has the coordinates 2 and minus 4. It's a midpoint concept. And V has its X, V, Y, V coordinates. And now we are excited. The origin has the coordinates we know because they're 0 and 0, and it's all good and well. And we're excited. She then say we can find then the coordinates of um, the point V if you know the midpoint formula. So we're going to deal with something called the midpoint. So now the midpoint formula is as follows. What is the midpoint formula? X1, X2 out of 2. Y1, Y2 out of 2. Okay. Okay. <laughs> x1, y1. And then here we have x2, y2 is the coordinate of v. 
X2, Y2 is the coordinate of V. So we continue. Right. So we have the following. We have the following. Right, so obviously, I mean, we have x1, which is 2. x1 is 2. x2 is x at the point v out of 2. y1 is a minus 4. y2 is y v out of 2. Um. Okay. Right, so now the midpoint is the origin, which is zero and zero. So now here we're finding the midpoint. So you take x1, you add to x2, you divide by two. You take y1, you add to y2, divide by two. This is the midpoint. But it is equal to the midpoint, which is the origin, zero and zero. Okay, for this here, this is the midpoint. Okay, because this, this OR is a radius and that is a radius. So then in the end, we're able to then say you have 2 plus xv out of 2 equals 0. And you have minus 4 plus yv out of 2 equals 0. You cross multiply 2 plus xv equals 0. And minus 4 plus yv equals 0. And xv is that. And this is four. Okay. Okay. Now we have the coordinate of V. Because we have X at V and Y at V and we're excited. We are thrilled to write down the following. So yeah, we're excited to then say, the point V has the coordinates. Just write a little bit further away from the um from the point O because then it's gonna be a total mixture and somebody's gonna be like, hey, this guy here. So yeah, the V has the coordinates minus two and four. Okay, this is awesome stuff. I mean, you can easily be able to find the coordinates of V the way without even a calculation. And this is a, a very strong observation because if the coordinates of R are two and minus four, and these are on the same line that passes through the origin, that passes through the origin, you can view this one as a rotation. You can rotate OR about the origin and if you rotate OR about the origin, it will then actually become the point V whose coordinates are minus two and four. But now just look at what they are doing. Yeah, hello, Trondre. Yeah, fine, thanks. I'm in class until six. Please come again. Yeah, by six, 15 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Trondre. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, so you continue then. Okay, I want us to, to do something here. Okay, but remember that we're just finding the coordinates of what? We're just finding the coordinates of, of V. Why are we finding the coordinates of V? But why? Because you want to find the length, and to find the length of VT, we must know the point V in terms of its coordinates, but we must also know the coordinates of T. V, T, you must know the coordinates of V and those of T. And that is how you can find the length of V, T. So at this point, we continue to do the following. We continue to do the following. Okay, yeah, V, um, that, but I was saying, it's like we rotated these. If you rotate this one, now the, the points, it's two minus two. Minus four, four. So it's like this have just been multiplied by negative. And this is what happens. It's called the rotation through 180 degrees. Just you hear me. 
a, a rotation through 180 degrees. That is what it does. So if you take a point and rotate through 100, 180 degrees, you just the, uh, multiply the coordinates by what? By minus, uh, by, by negative one. So like two becomes negative two and a minus four becomes a plus four. Okay. I want us to find the area, okay, rather the length of VT. Okay, we already know the the coordinates of V and 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 and, and those of T. So yeah. Therefore, we then say, what do we then have? Okay. We have V with coordinates minus two four. We have T with coordinates zero minus five. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, which means VT X2 minus X1 squared. Y2 minus Y1 squared. This is called a distance formula. And therefore now we continue to find the distance. So we continue here below. And if we continue here below, we are able to find VT, which equals, what is X2? X2 is zero. What is X1? It's minus two squared. What is Y2? It's a minus five. Y1 is a four. Okay, you square this, it becomes a four plus 81. Okay, yeah, which is exactly 85, square root of 85. So the length of VT is actually there for the distance formula we use to substitute it and it is the square root of, of 85 units. It is actually the square root of 85 units, like so. So we continue. We continue. Right. We continue. So we look at the next question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there are too many questions, but I want us to focus on the things that are for this term, not um on the on the things that do not matter okay in the diagram below tangent kt so you have tangent this is k and that is t right to the circular k is parallel to the chord and m parallel to the chord and m and this is the chord nt cuts the circuit at l nt n t cuts the circuit at the point l right this triangle km l is drawn triangle K, M, L, this triangle is drawn. The angle M2 is 40 degrees. The angle MKT is 84. So we have 40 degrees, which is the which is the angle M2. And also the angle MKT, right? M, K, T, the angle is 84 degrees. Oh, determine giving reasons the size of the angle K2. We want the angle K2. We want this angle here. We want this angle here when this one is a tangent to the circle, right? So we're good. We're good. So who can find who can find the size of the angle K2? This one. What is the size of the angle K2? Right, what is the size of the angle? Who can find it? Please let me know when you've got it. Let me give you a chance to practice with, with, with us the geometry. Right, anyone home? What is the size of the angle K2? And why? Right, Tando. What is the size of the angle K2? 
We're doing 8.1. We want to find the size of the angle K2. What is the size of the angle K2? Please answer the question. Okay, Senulo. What is the size of the angle K2? 40, sir. It is 40. Why is it 40, Senulo? What is the reason? Um, what's this theorem? Uh, mm -hmm. Angle, exterior angle. Um... Exterior angle, oh, so I forgot this. Okay, that's fine, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy that you're trying. Yeah, Exterior I agree, angle. yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you because there's a tangent. So there's this theorem that is like this. This is this if, theorem that is like that, and then you draw something. Exterior like angle this. of a triangle is equal to the opposite or or what not subtending angle. Yeah, I get you. Like I that. get you. I get you. So there's a, a there's an angle between a tangent because they said here tangent kt. So kt is a tangent. There's an angle between a tangent to a second and a chord. It is equal to the angle subtended by the chord, and this chord subtends this angle. So this angle here, it is the angle equals to this angle here, and that is called the because there's a tangent and a chord. It is called the tan chord. It's called the ten chord theorem. It is called the ten chord theorem. Okay, there's a tangent because they said tangent kt here. So there's a tangent kt like this, and then now you have this. Ah, and this angle that sits here is equal to the angle that sits there. In other words, we are able to see, therefore that uh, we have the following. We have the following. So we're able to see therefore that we have um, that the angle K2 is actually equal to M2. The angle K2 is M2. Angle K2 is M2 and it's equal to 40 degrees. Which is the ten chord theorem. Ten chord theorem. So the angle K two equals uh, M two, which equals forty degrees. The angle K two equals M two equals forty degrees. Angle K2 equals M2 equals 40 degrees. Then the next thing we want to do, angle N1. The angle N1. The angle N1. Right, so now if this one is 40 degrees, who can find the angle N1? This one. This one. What is angle N1? Anyone home? Let's give you a chance to practice with us. What is the size of the angle N1? Who can get the angle N1? Right. Who knows what the angle N1 is here? Who knows what the angle N1 is here? Right. Anyone home? There's no one home. Perhaps there's nobody. Yeah, but somebody should be here to say, hey, I know what it is. I know what it is. Angle N1, who can find it? I'm giving you a chance to practice, but also I'm giving you a chance to shine. I'm giving you a chance to shine. N1 is 84, sir. You think that N1 is equal to 84? Okay, okay. A very good attempt from uh, Tando. Thanks for that attempt, Tando. Okay, now, the couple of things that are very important. But first things first, you can see that N1 is equal to this angle here. So we can see that first things first here, the angle N1 is equal to the angle K1. And then, now, this is true because these are, they form a butterfly like this. They form a... Uh, a bow tie. They form a bow tie because now if you have this bow tie like that, okay, let me put the draw the bow tie thing here. Right, so you have this here and this. 
this angle here equals this angle there, and this angle here equals this angle there. Okay, so yeah, I'll take note of that. Okay, in principle, then we have the angle N1 equals the angle K1, and these are angles in the same segment. Angles in the same segment. Okay. Angles in the same side. Okay, what do we do next? But the challenge is one, is that we don't know this angle here. We know the whole thing, but we also know this one is 40. But you can say that the angle K1, the angle K1 is 84 degrees. 84 degrees minus 40 degrees. So the angle K1 is 84 degrees minus 40 degrees. And the, that is, what is 84 minus 40 is 44 degrees. This gives us that this angle is 44 degrees. So that 44 degrees plus 40 degrees is 84 degrees, 84 degrees. Okay, right. Now we are in business because we found K1 and uh, we can then say, hence, the angle N1, the angle N1 is equal to, is equal to the angle K1, which equals 44 degrees, like so. And obviously, I've already got the angle K2, which is 40 degrees, the angle N1, which is 44 degrees, and then we continue. We continue. Okay, we continue. Okay, what next now? We want to find angle T. Who can get the size of the angle T? Anyone home? So in other words, we've got some of the angles. I mean, here we've got 40. Here we got 44 degrees. This it's one. 44. Please come again. It's you 44. Think, you think T is 44? Yes. <laughs> why? Why? Is that, I mean, that was quick, but why? Alt angle. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Now that is smart, but that was quick. I was I was shocked that you know, just gave me the answer and I was just writing 44 and he was saying 44. I agree with you, Tenilo, you know, because now this one here, this is what the angles are doing. This one is going there and this one is doing this. And now if they're doing this, they're doing a Z thing like that. So you have therefore that the angle T is equal to the angle N1. The angle T equals this angle N1. And therefore, it is equal to four degrees. And these are alt angles. They are alternating angles. Why are they alternate angles? They're alternate angles. So you write alternate angles because there are two parallel lines. What are the parallel lines? The parallel lines are exactly KT. KT parallel to NM. NM. <laughs> 44 degrees. 44 degrees, hey, just 44 all the time. Just look at these questions and look at the examiners. The K2 is actually 40 degrees. Now, the next thing, let us find the angle L2. Who can find the size of the angle L2? Okay, so yeah, we need L2 now. This one, you know, is 44. This one is 40. So we was able to find this one 44. This one is 44 degrees. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> then now, what is L2 now? This one. L is this one. And then L2 is this. But what is the size of L2? What is the size of L2? What is the size of L2? 96. <laughs> that sounds very smart, but why do you think it is uh, that way there, um, Tenelo? Why? Uh, 
Some of angles on a straight line. Some of angles on a straight line. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Okay, 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 okay. Because this one reminds us of grade. It reminds us of grade 10. Grade 10, there's a triangle that is like this from grade 10. So in grade 10, if they do this, and then they do this, and then they call this one, one, two, and then they mark some angles like that. And then now they put this one, one, and then this is C, A, B. Then they say angle C1 is equals to angle A plus angle B. And this is uh, the exterior angle of, of triangle equals the sum of the interior opposite. So it is the same one. So we can say L2 is this one plus this one. We've already got that in there. You are, so we say L2 is, is K2. So L2 is K2 plus T. K2 is 40. T is 44. And this is 84. Yeah, so L2 is 84. Okay. Yeah. T is 44. N1 is 44. K2 is 40. And then we need L1. Now we need L1. What is the size of this angle? L1. We need L1 right now. Who can find the size of the angle L1? Who knows? All right, ah, okay, but yeah, the reason for this. As I said, so, because we're saying L2 is 40 plus this, it's 40 plus 44, and the reason is exterior angle of triangle. Okay, we already know, if you write like this, the examiner already knows the exterior angle of triangle causes the sum of the interior opposite angles some of the interior opposite angles. Okay. So. Okay. Yes, please. What is L1? Yes, please. Can I ask something? Yes, please. Does angle subtended by a chord still work if there is no diameter? Because isn't it a chord? Is a, is a yes, 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 they work, they work, they work. So that, so that means this is angulate chord because you're going to minus uh, L2 and then from 90, you're going to get L1. Okay, yeah. So now if we are, let's see what you say there. Yeah, uh -huh. so what do we do now here? <laughs> because isn't it angle subtended by a chord is equals to 90 okay 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 I get you I get you I get you and we have L, L2 alright and that angle is equals to 90 that, uh, right. the whole angle of the, the whole uh, L1 and L2 are equal to 90 both of them so if we minus L2 mm -hmm. to get from 90 we must get L1 I hear you I hear you Okay, yeah, but for, for a chord subtends angles, but for the angles obtained by chord to be 90 degrees, that must be a diameter passing through the center. Um, okay, so yeah. Okay, I hear you. I hear you said you're on point. Right, so but now we can deal with the rest of this. Okay, you are, we are on point. So already know this one is 40. This one is 44. This one is 84. L2 is 84. So it's a triangle in this triangle. There's 44, there's 40, these. So you can just add everything in this triangle. It's only this one that is left. Because you already know L2 is 84. So yeah. So to find L1, this one you already know is 84. 
And uh, this one is, uh, is 44. This one is 40. So it's only this one we want, that we want. So yeah, but obviously you're on point. That there are many ways to find this answer, these questions, obviously. Geometry, there are many ways, there are many theorems you can use. But now we can just use to choose to work in triangle KRM and uh, then say, we're gonna take 44 degrees, this one, and then we're gonna add 84 degrees. Then you're gonna add um 40 degrees. Then you're gonna add L1 and it's 180 degrees. Why? Angles in triangle. Angles in triangle. Okay, yeah, you can just say, and uh, it's also acceptable to say in short, you say angles sum in triangle. Angles sum in triangle. And with this, then we're able to um, do algebra. Angle L1 is 180 minus 44 minus 84 minus 40. Okay, it's 12. So the angle L1 is 12. Yeah, angle L1 is what? It's exactly 12 degrees. Right, it was awesome having you guys and thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, I'm gonna be right back at 8 p.m. For those who have a lot of energy, I'm gonna evaluate what we can do at 8 p.m. Okay.